<sighs> right off the bat, I'm going to say this is not my normal video. Uh, although I do seem to make a video similar to this like once a year. There's no fishing in this. So if you're here to watch me fish, skip this one. I'll have another video coming up next that'll be fishing. But I want to take a minute and address a few things and go over some of the things I've had to deal with in my situation being a YouTuber. And, well, I'm technically a business owner now. So first of all, what I want to say is this video is not directed towards any individual person. I do two things. I create fishing videos. And secondarily, I make baits lures tackle whatever you want to call it as secondarily what that should mean for you is since i make videos you watch the videos if you don't like them don't watch them it's that simple and second since i make baits you either buy baits or you don't buy baits there are quite a few people out there trying to change how that works this all came about because of a comment, a recent comment from someone not happy with what I'm doing. Uh, this is not the first time that's happened. And that's the next point I want to get into here. In the beginning stages of doing what I'm doing, every once in a while somebody popped up, specifically when I caught a trout. Uh, this video is not about this, but I want to start here and grow into what the real problem is. There's, there's like trout police out there that for some reason, they feel an invasive stocked rainbow trout is worth just as much as their son or daughter. Uh, trout are fragile. But to me, there shouldn't be so much value in a trout, especially an invasive, stocked trout, that you would go as far as threatening someone. Basically speaking, there are some crazy trout people out there. Uh, which is partially why, over the years, I have grown into being more of a bass fisherman, because honestly, I don't enjoy trout fishing, and then dealing with those kind of people just made it worse. And over the years, my perspective of it is trout are invasive they're not supposed to be here primarily rainbows right that's what i've learned over the years and uh they're hard to deal with and they are fragile so i kind of just stay away from them now besides the point that i really just don't enjoy trout fishing like i do bass fishing but going forward before i even started doing youtube i had a conversation with my family and i said in the beginning that if i ever felt threatened if i or my family ever felt threatened that i would stop immediately because it's not worth doing what I'm doing to risk me or my family's lives or their well-being. I would like to say so far that hasn't happened, but this last year, we have been walking that line pretty badly. And I'm sure right now a lot of you people are thinking, oh, you're over-exaggerating. How could this possibly be? Hey, I'm in the same boat. I can't believe it myself. And I'm not talking just keyboard warriors, okay? That's a thing. And I'm not talking about people saying, oh, you're a D-bag or you're dumb, whatever. There's all kinds of things I've been called, whatever. That doesn't bother me. What does bother me is someone saying, I know where you're fishing. I fish there also. You're going to ruin this river, showing everybody this river, and then proceeding to threaten me. First of all, I've been doing this for many years, and I have spots that I have shown and said what they are and where they are, and I can go back there anytime I want, and I rarely run into a single person. And if you really want to blame someone for ruining a place in the river, blame Google Maps. You can't hide anything from Google Maps. And that brings up another topic as to, yes, I am starting to put some locations on my video titles, but I'm only doing that for public known places. If I go on to Google Maps and I search boat ramp and it comes up, I'm putting it in a video. It is that public. And there are boat ramps that are private, and I don't go to those, and I don't show those. And as for other places in this river that are actual bank fishing spots, or in particular areas that people don't know about or don't know how to access, I'm not going to show you how to get there. I never have, I never will. The potential for me to ruin a spot really isn't there like we thought. Even I was paranoid about that in the beginning, and as I'm growing, people aren't following me around. It's just not happening. As for a weekend, the weekend on this river through the summer months is insane. You can't go anywhere without people being there. That's how it's been since I can remember. That hasn't changed. That is not my fault. That is what it is. That's not even Google Maps fault. Local people know how to get to the river. Okay, it's that simple. I'm not bringing other people here. And if you think like I'm bringing people from other places to come here, why the heck would someone drive? One, two, three, four hours away to come fish this place 
and catch mediocre smallmouth. Yeah, I catch big smallmouth for here. Our big smallmouth here are small smallmouth for other places in this state. You go to Erie, you'll catch bigger fish. You go to the Susquehanna, you'll catch bigger fish. The list continues, okay? I have built this channel towards catching big smallmouth, which is relative to the body of water that I'm fishing. Just to touch on the being threatened part a little bit more before I move on. Uh, like I said, we're walking that line where maybe I should have shut this down. You kind of got to watch what you do around here, which is why I don't record people unless they want to be recorded. Uh, if you're sitting on the bank, I don't care what you're doing. I'm not invading your privacy. If I come to a fishing spot and there's a guy, two, three, four guys, whatever, fishing there, I turn around, I go somewhere else. I am not going to invade your privacy on the river. That is not what this is about. I'm not that kind of person. I also like my privacy. And secondly, you threatening me, trying to bully me into quit doing what I'm doing, doesn't work. I'm a man just like anyone else. You push me, I'm going to push you back. You want to push me to not do what I'm doing, I'm going to do it even more. You don't own the river, neither do I. I want the same thing you want. There is no need for you to threaten me. Let me calm it down again. Moving forward, I am going to be heavily limiting making videos fishing with other people. I will continue fishing with my direct friends and family, but over the years I have learned some people aren't meant to be in front of the camera, some people don't act responsible, and I don't need to be associated with that. The main reason why I'm limiting who I'm fishing with going forward it creates twice as much work for me when I decide to go fish with a stranger. The editing takes twice as long. Uh, the audio ends up being crap because I don't have a mic for you or that person doesn't want to wear a camera so I don't have an audio. So nobody can hear anything and in the few moments you can hear anything we're both talking over each other because human beings for some reason never let people finish their sentences. It, it just makes for a huge editing problem. And I'm here to say, uh, one of the recent comments, somebody seemed very upset saying that I don't have people in my videos and I'm a narcissist. Well, listen, it's my YouTube channel. It's about me. It's about me fishing. It's the name of the channel. I wanted it to be open to have new people to go fishing with. But like I said, over the years, I've learned that that's just a big pain in my butt and it doesn't work out. I don't make enough money to worry about what somebody else wants in my channel, my video. Going back to a point I made earlier, I make videos, you watch them or you don't watch them. I make baits, you buy them or you don't buy them. I did not start my YouTube channel to make friends. I didn't start it to find fishing buddies. I didn't start it to steal information from people. I didn't start it to find people's spots. Uh, I started this because I lost my job and this is me basically gambling my life savings to see if I can turn this into a job for myself. You can look at that however you want. You can look at it as, I started YouTube to make money. Fine, so be it. You can look at that as negatively or positively as you want. I first started this, going fishing. I'm at the casino pulling a lever, throwing a video out there and seeing what happens. Of course, every single person that makes a video and puts it up from, for social media is hoping that it goes viral and then they make it, right? That's not what I'm doing here. I'm putting in hours and hours of work every single week to bring you guys videos and I'm here to try and entertain you primarily and then try to teach you something that I'm trying to add into my videos as I go. Uh, and of course, on top of that now, I'm trying to use my videos for ads for my bait company to try and make a penny from what I'm doing here. And I'll just say right now that from the beginning of YouTube, if I add up all the things I've paid for and then all the money I've made in both my YouTube and my company at this point, I have not made a single penny. Not one. Right now, I'm making like 140, 150 bucks a month from YouTube. That will have to continue for years before it pays off all the cameras and equipment I've gone through and gas I've burned to go make videos. Uh, as for my company, it is actually doing decent. So many people seen a video where I said I bought a thousand dollars worth of do-it molds. That list was the very beginning buy. I have bought a lot of stuff since then. I've bought a lot of hooks and supplies and tools and everything. LLC cost everything. Uh, I can't even give you a total of what I've invested into doing this, but I can tell you that we are close to making half of that amount of money back. Uh, it took a lot of money to start what I'm starting in both YouTube and the bait company. 
Uh, the big company is me doubling down in myself and what I've been doing to see if I can become successful. This is an investment. I am continuing this because I feel like in the future, I can set this up to eventually make some money for myself and make this my full-time job. Uh, right now, it is my full-time job without pay. Maybe a lot of this information I shouldn't be saying, but at this point, I don't care because I'm at that line where if I just shut this all down, it is what it is. If I have to do that, I will. I don't want to do that to you guys, and uh, I don't want to do that to myself. It is very difficult to do what I've been doing. People don't understand that because they're not in my shoes. They're not doing what I'm doing. Speaking of the company thing, on my Shopify, I would love it if you guys could leave that contact page for business. I'm getting a lot of messages that should be in a comment to a YouTube video or contacted me through my Facebook or just regularly emailed me, not through my store. And it's funny that most of these people doing that haven't bought a single thing from my store. Which brings me to another topic. I would really love it if people would quit contacting me through my email, Facebook, and having full-blown conversations back and forth, multiple messages about what baits would be good for them, uh, explaining why, how to use them, and spending a whole lot of time helping them decide what to buy from my store and why, just for them to never place an order. It is insane how many times that has happened. I don't understand why another human being needs to talk to me about buying baits from my store and then not buying anything. If you don't want to buy anything, don't buy anything. Stop bothering me if you don't intend on buying anything. Uh, whatever. It, it, it is, it is. I'm dealing with the public, right? If this continues this direction, I can see that some things are going to lack in what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. And a lot of that is with comments. Uh, sometimes I get a lot of comments, sometimes I don't. But I'm getting a lot of messages on top of comments through Facebook, my email, my store, all kinds of things. And it's becoming pretty hard to keep track of. Um, so what I'm saying is I would like to see you guys comment to each other and talk to each other. Uh, there are some very, very smart people that know of really good things and they're leaving really good information in the comments. And you guys can talk to each other. It doesn't always have to be me. Um, I'm saying that because I'm going to start running out of time to reply to all these comments. Again, I'm not saying I have that many comments. I'm saying in the whole, with everything I'm doing, I'm going to start running out of time for that. Oh, something I want to cover, people ask all the time, do you really catch this many fish every time you go out? The simple answer is no. You guys are seeing the best trip from that time period. Um, do I get skunked when I go out? It's very rare at this point. If I have a trip where I catch... 40 smallies and they're all under 15, but I have a trip where I catch 10 and I catch a 17, 18, I'm gonna upload this one. Uh, catching a lot of fish, to me, isn't, uh, isn't the goal. I wanna catch a big fish. I think people wanna see the bigger fish. So that's what you guys see. Uh, I don't need to spend 20, 30, 40 hours to make a video that isn't as good as the next day than when I went out and caught more fish or better fish. I, I'm not I'm not making these videos to make myself seem like I'm some kind of fishing god. Okay, I'm not. This is me learning to fish and I have been successful. Uh, and I can guarantee you pretty much every YouTuber out there is doing the same thing. The ones that don't are the ones that have a day or two during the week to fish and they make a week video every week then you're just gonna see what happened to them every single week. I don't do that. I go for kill. I wanna catch big smallmouth, I wanna make cool videos, I wanna entertain you guys, that's my goal. Okay, here's one that's kinda of funny, a little lighter. Okay, since I'm in the position of hunting down big smallmouth, that's what I like to do, it, uh, big is a relative term. My big isn't your big, your big isn't my big. But what I'd like to say is, man, I have come across so many people telling me that they're catching 20s, 21s, 22s, 23s, 24s. I've even had somebody told me, tell me 
that they caught a 25 inch smallmouth out of this river. I have people sending me pictures of them holding fish, telling me it's a four pounder and it looks more like a two pounder. That's why I have a bump board in my boat. Yeah, of course, I make estimations. I hold up a 14 sometimes and go, look at this 16, and I put it on a board and I go, it's a 14. I get it. It happens, man. These fish fight hard, they fool you, okay? But I'm just saying, some of you guys need to buy a bump board. Put that fish on a bump board. Take a picture on a bump board so that you understand what you caught. I I'm not going to be impressed by you holding up a 16 telling me it's a 20. Sorry. Again, this is not towards anyone in, in specific because there are people that have sent me some pictures of really big smallmouth, okay? There there are guys out there catching really big fish, okay? I'm not taking that away from you. You do. You guys catch some hammers, okay? You do. Many people catch bigger fish than me. It absolutely is a thing. I'm not denying that. I am still in my learning process, and hopefully one day I can go out and catch a 20 every time I'm out there. Uh, I say 20 because that's the biggest fish I've caught. Uh, the only other fish I've seen bigger than that is a 21. I have people sending me pictures saying they've caught bigger. I want to see it on a board. I like the board because you can't cheat it. You holding up a scale, you could have teared it differently. And I'm saying this because moving forward, I would like to see you guys show me pictures on a bump board. That's what I want to see. If you're going to send me a picture, show me it on a bump board. You're, you can't lie to me and yourself, I'm gonna see right through it, okay? That's the only thing I wanna drive home here is, all of us bass fishing are fishing for small fish. They're small fish. Carp are bigger, catfish are bigger, muskie are bigger, drum are bigger. The list goes on. I, I don't know what else to say here. Uh, I chase the biggest small fish in this river. Don't fool yourself. We are all chasing these little green and brown fish. They're small fish. They put up a heck of a fight for their size. It's awesome. It's about the challenge. Which brings me to the next point. If you catch a giant and I ask you what you caught it on and you tell me a creek chub, bud, anyone can do that. You tell me you caught it on a night crawler. Cool. Anyone can do that. You know, smallmouth are the easiest fish to catch. And you're just making it even easier using live bait. I hold honor in fishing for them with artificial. That is where my excitement comes from because you take it a step farther and make it more of a challenge to do so. I'm not downing anyone that fishes with live bait. I'm just saying I don't do that. That is not my thing. And again, as for the people saying, oh, smallmouth fishing is easy to do. Why would I watch you? I'm fine with that. It is easy. But what's not easy is fishing for them with artificial. It's not easy to catch in this river a 17 and above. It's also not easy to catch them year round and I just barely have done that one myself and I plan on doing that coming up in the future hopefully even better than last year if you guys went around for the elite challenge for last year I have been challenged to catch a smallmouth out of this river and every single month on artificial not live bait it's important to note I just barely squeaked by last year catching at least one fish per month through the winter months it is tough very tough I'm hoping to either catch more or bigger ones throughout this winter. It would be awesome if I could do that. I think I covered everything. I probably didn't. I really don't like making these videos, but I had to get it out there. As we're growing, we're growing a lot of haters too. It, it is amazing to think that someone going out fishing for some little green fish has acquired some people that want to cause me harm because that's what I do. It's insane. But we live in an insane world. Uh, the world right now is going crazy. Well, at least this country is. I'm not getting into that. I'm not speaking politics. I don't want to speak politics. I'm not going to speak religion. I fish. That's another point I want to make here. I fish. That's what I do. I don't, I'm not getting into anything else. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Oh, and another thing. None of my videos are current. I can't fish today and get you a video tomorrow. It's not possible. The people out there that go fishing and take a picture or record when they catch a fish, they might be able to do that. That's not what I'm doing. I am creating like a movie every time I can. I aim for a week behind. That's my goal. As the year progresses, that just gets pushed back farther and farther. It becomes two weeks, then it becomes three weeks, and it becomes a month. Month is very close to my deadline of being like, okay, those videos aren't being made no more. No one can go fishing, have multiple cameras, 
fish for eight hours plus sometimes, come home, upload the stuff, edit it all out, process it, upload it, make a thumbnail, put it up the next day. It's not possible. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you catch a giant. Hopefully it's not on live bait. Hopefully you guys are okay with how the channel is going to proceed. See you next time. And it would suck if that camera was off the whole time. Nope, we're good.